Hi everyone. So today I wanted to talk about plate solving. When I've talked with people that are newer to the hobby and I mention plate solving, I find that in conversations they've heard about it and they don't know much about it and they feel like it's a lot harder to set up than what it's worth and what they've heard makes them think that it's it's kind of like magic. Um, and so I wanted to, to kind of go through that today and really let you know what it is, what it does, how to get going with it. And the first thing that I should say about it is that it kind of is magic. Uh, I love it. It's one of the, the things that over the last 10 years of this hobby I think is probably about the best thing released. And you're starting to find it in a lot of places. So in Celestron, they have something called their StarSense Auto Align. Um, Mead has a similar kind of product. And the Pole Master are all different ways of taking essentially a camera with a little bit of a computer built in or a piece of software that runs on your computer and using the image that's taken, compare it against a uh, catalog of known images of the stars to figure out what it is I'm looking at. And you find it all over the place in certain websites like Astrobin, where if you upload an image to it, uh, it'll actually plate solve it for you, which is nice if you mouse over the image, it'll show you, you know, what objects are contained therein. The rest of this video, I'm really going to go through how you get it set up. You know, we're going to talk about uh, two of the main programs that I use and that I see most commonly used out there, which are SharpCap and Sequence Generator Pros. Uh, it'll be fairly detailed. I'm assuming that you haven't installed any of the stuff, you haven't set it up. I'll give you some recommendations on kind of what I've set up in mind. Pick one that works for you. Once you get one of them working, you'll be able to start seeing the benefits there and then you'll you'll be able to, to get into the other steps of it a little bit easier from there. And then you'll really be able to find, you know, what mix of these tools is really going to provide the best benefit for you. Let's jump into looking at it on the computer. When you're really wanting to image and you've got a very defined field of view, like this, this particular image is of the three stars of Orion's belt. And I really, I had a vision in my head of I wanted all three stars in one shot, uh, especially knowing how much nebulosity there is around, you know, on the tack here. So I wanted to be able to get that horse head in and stuff. So having this star be my dead center wouldn't help, right? If I had that star dead center, all of this information would have been cut off. You know, similarly, if I had this one in the corner, you know, or or that kind of thing, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be losing something that I really wanted to have. So I really needed to dial it in very, very specifically. And plate solving really allows you to do that. And so what I wanted to walk you through here today, um, now that I've, I've kind of talked about kind of the idea of what it is, is how you set it up for the, the two most common programs that I use and that I see around quite a bit. So the programs we're gonna look here, look at here today are SharpCap and Sequence Generator Pro. These are the two that I use most often and that I see used uh, quite often out there. And with both programs, you kind of are doing a similar setup phase where essentially, and this is part of the initial setup of the software, um, is you're setting up what, what equipment do I have? And you can think of plate solving as a piece of equipment um, for these particular programs. So in the case of Sequence Generator, there's an equipment profile manager and you'll set up a profile for your particular equipment. In SharpCap Pro, it's under the SharpCap settings where you would go through and be setting up, you know, if you did want SharpCap to control, say, your mount uh, or filter wheel and that kind of thing, um, you also have a tab for plate solving. And to show you in SharpCap Pro or in Sequence Generator Pro real quick, if, you know, using this as a dummy template, you'll see there's a tab for plate solving here too. So that's, that's the basics of it. Whatever program you go into is probably going to have in their settings a plate solve option that's kind of either buried with the hardware or with the overall settings for that particular program. So 
what they're actually doing here is they're looking for a few things. They're, they're essentially looking for either an outside program or an outside data set uh, that the program can then work off of. And what that data set really is, is a bunch of files that will tell the computer for a particular field of view in a picture you know, what are, what are the different possible star combinations that are out there? Um, and so when you have an image loaded in the system and you want to plate solve it, it will kind of do an analysis to detect stars in your image and where they are. And then it will try to match that as close as it can against a library of different star position coordinations. Now, if that sounds complicated, it is, right? You know, but it, they, a lot's been done to make it pretty simple on the user end once everything is set up. So you need to get those libraries. In this case, you can see that it's it's saying here path to the solve field tool from, you know, it's saying Astro Tortilla here. That's kind of a little bit generic uh, on this. I don't actually use that program. But underneath it says ANSVR. That is a particular plate solving library and it is the local astrom astrometry.net plate solver. Um, you can find it if you do a Google search for ANSVR. This is what will come up for you, and they've got the instructions on how to download it and set it up here. And I'm actually going to go through it, but I'll probably buzz through it here uh, pretty quickly. Now, one thing that you should definitely do is pay attention to where you are putting your, your things like your shortcuts and what uh, particular folder everything's going to go into. Um, so you can see here, it's, it's, the instructions will kind of guide you through that you know, on if you want to put it in a different start menu folder. But it's things like this where it says port number. Um, but I would leave everything in here as default unless you really kind of know what you're doing with things like your ports because this is going to set up a little server on your machine that the other programs could talk to. So if you don't have a reason to change it, don't change it. So we'll go through here and just kind of click along with it here. So I'm going to leave the port alone. You can see it's going to put it in those folders. That all looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run. All right, so now that it's done here, before I run anything else, I'm gonna check the instructions. All right, it says we should move on from there. Now, I'm going slowly on this, and for most folks, it's probably going to be pretty straightforward how to you know install a program. But the reason why I do that is the, the plate solve process is kind of a two-step dance uh, when you're doing the install. The first thing that we just installed was the solver. So you can think of that as the program that's actually going to run to do the solving. But the next piece is the indexes, which is the database of the different star locations that are going to be used in the matching. And you have to do both. Um, you know, if, if the processor doesn't have a database to match against, you don't get anywhere and vice versa. The other part of this I want to show is it's saying start ANSVR. The reason why it's got SVR in there is I said it's making a server. So this is something that if you're ever having problems with your plate solving and it's not running um, and you're using the ANSVR as, as what you want to be running it on, you can always actually in the instructions in here show it, you can go and check and make sure the server is actually running. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say finish here. Now it's going to pop up uh, the it's going to need access that's going to pop up the index manager so what it's looking to do here and it explains it fairly well but the idea is as i mentioned before it's going to compare the field of view of your picture against its database all right one trick to finding your field of view is to use a field of view calculator so i'm going to go ahead and just punch in field of view calculator i tend to do field of view calculator telescope to make sure that i'm looking for one 
And then a lot of you'll find a lot of different calculators out there. I like this one uh, from Astronomy Tools uh, because it has a lot of basic uh, uh, kind of guides in there for you. But I'll say I'm looking at imaging and it'll ask you to pick just kind of a, a particular object just to get an idea of how it would fit in your in your field of view which is kind of nice uh, but so I just put it in the crab nebula there and then you pick your scope in my case uh, I'm using my Takahashi 106 and I have a ZWO ASI 1600 uh, but as you can see there's a large you know kind of database of ones there and if you don't see them in the database you can always punch in the information for your specific equipment and then say add it to the database from there um, if you have any reducers or barlows, you can add those in here. Those always affect your field of view, as does uh, your binning um, and that kind of thing. Um, so once you have that, it'll show you the field of view information right underneath it here. And so really for me, this is what I'm most concerned with. So in my case, I have a uh, Let's see, let's say a 0.67 reducer. Okay, well, if I'm going to do that focal reducer, then I'm looking at about three degrees on a side there. And then if I also had an extender, which would be similar to a Barlow, so let's say that I had a 1.6 extender, then I'm looking at my narrowest on this one being about 0.9 degrees. So I think I said that was 3 and 0.9. So when I go back to my database of what I want to pick for here, then I'm saying, okay, well, I was at about 0.9. And as it was mentioned before, initially here, about 20% of where I want to go there. So it's asking you to go extra small uh, from that in case you were cropping. So maybe I would pick, okay, well, instead of, you know, this one, which will get me about where is, maybe I'll go about two steps down from that. And then on the top one, I want to make sure that I'm covering the uh, that three degree point of what I had there. And that covers the range from my reducer uh, going out to my biggest field of view down to my extender going to my narrowest field of view. And at that point, I can just hit start. And let them download. Now in my case I recently downloaded these so it's going very fast uh, but depending on your internet speed this can take a long time especially if you have if you go very very small here there are a lot of files uh, that can be downloaded for that but once that's done you can literally just close that up and at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and close up both of these programs here And let's go ahead and start by starting up SharpCat. All right. Now I want to go back into those SharpCat settings. And go back over to plate solving. And hey, detect automatically is already now filled in. Because I've downloaded all that, all those libraries, uh, you know, SharpCap is smart enough to kind of go looking for it. Um, so I went and found it, and said, "Oh, that's where that is." And then you have some sections here. You know, your your noise detection threshold. Maybe by default this might be a little high. Um, I think on my other machine I have it set at 10. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, automatically down sample large images when solving. I would leave this checked on, uh, because this will, you know, essentially just make it move faster uh, when it's got to process a lot of data then after that this is the bread and butter this is what you want in plate solving actions after i've solved what do i want to do on the telescope controls do i want to sync my mount and recenter the target or do i just want to sync the mount only but either one of these is just fine um, i'm going to go ahead and i'll just leave it on the default there um, and click apply Okay, and now that's done. So how does that work on this one? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and open up. Uh, imagine you had your real camera hooked up, but you can also use the folder monitor camera to pull up an image. Um, so in this case, I just pointed it at the folder of my raw ones for the ones that we were looking at here. And so this is what I wanna be looking at. And I could pull any image uh, into the program here um, from, you know, 
from my hard drive to, to then do it on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to tools and plate solve. Um, now you see here it says capturing a frame to plate solve. And it's just sitting there. That's because I'm using that folder camera. If you were using your, your main telescope on here, then what it would be doing is it would just wait for the next frame to come in. So in my case, uh, I have to actually give it another frame. I have to step forward one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and now you see the, the solving picked up automatically. So it's reading that input file, down sampling, and then it's going to go through all these. To be honest, I don't know what most of those mean. Sometimes it goes pretty quick. Sometimes it goes a little slower. In this case, it went you know really nice and quick for me here. Um, I've found sometimes it can take up to about a minute for the plate solve to work in, in sharp cap. Um, but yeah, plate solve succeeded, currently pointing at those those particular uh, coordinates. Field of view is, and you see in this one, I'm a little over three degrees uh, by two degrees on that one. And it even knows the direction up is you know this. Um, so I could copy that data, or as we showed before, it will update, if I had a telescope connected, it'll update that to say this is where you're pointing. Um, and so all that work that you did at the beginning before you have any kind of plate solving in place where you would do a three star alignment, four star alignment, one star alignment. Now, really all you have to do is have the camera on, take a picture and then tell it to plate solve that picture or to plate solve the next picture it takes. And then it will update your pointing model. So that's how you do it in SharpCap. Now I will admit, I don't use SharpCap for a lot of my plate solving because most of the time when I'm doing an imaging session, I'm in Sequence Generator Pro. So let's take a little bit more of a look at how you do the same kind of thing in Sequence Generator Pro. Sequence Generator Pro can be set up just about as easily as SharpCap was. Uh, however, there are additional options and features that you have in Sequence Generator Pro that you might find useful when you're setting up something that you want to run all night long as opposed to just helping out with a pointing model when you're getting started or when you flip your peer, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go through both of those here. Uh, the first one to be just to get you started and getting it working. And then the second one that's really going to be focused on being as efficient as possible with your imaging time. So to begin with, when you're looking at plate solving for Sequence Generator Pro, that is going to be under the Equipment Profile Manager. You know, you can think of this as a piece of equipment almost uh, to do your, your, your plate solving. So after that, you'll have a profile for your equipment, and this is all part of the normal setup of Sequence Generator Pro. And whenever you have that profile, you'll have a plate solve uh, plate solve option in there. So when you come in to that option, most of this will probably won't be filled out yet, but I'll go through the options here with you. Your first you have you have to pick which plate solver do you want to use. The one that we set up for SharpCap, that ANSVR, is the astrometry.net plate solver. So we already installed it, we got it working in SharpCap, so we've already got it ready to go here for Sequence Generator Pro. So you can go ahead and select that one as the easy first option. And then when you click Settings on that, what you'll notice is that there are two different versions that you can pick from. The first one is the astrometry.net remote option, and the second one is the ANSVR local astrometry.net. And really what it comes down to is the remote version is the website, astrometry.net, uh, and it can do very robust, all sky plate solving, doesn't have to know anything about the image, you just send it to it and it will work. Um, that is, is a really great option, but there's two drawbacks on it. The first is it can be a little bit slower than anything that's running on your main machine because it has to upload potentially a pretty large image over the internet and then process it on their servers there before sending you the information back. The second one is kind of buried in the first one. It's got to upload something over the internet, so it requires an internet connection. This is something that is kind of a deal breaker sometimes when you're out at a remote location. So I would recommend to, since we already got it running in SharpCap, to go ahead and use the ANSVR, the local astrometry.net option. Just go ahead and say okay there. And then 
This particular plate solver has no options under here, so you can just skip the search. I'd leave binning at one by one because that's your normal average binning. And then it's asking for the exposures you're going to take when you do a plate solve, uh, the exposures in seconds you want to take for a plate solve exposure. Normally, if you're using either a, a normal one shot color camera or uh, a luminance filter, five to 10 seconds is normally fine. Um, so you can set this around any way you want. Uh, these attempt to options, um, I'm not going to go over right now because I consider that to be more on the advanced side. You can leave those at the defaults. These aren't the defaults, but I'll come back and explain those when I talk about kind of that next level of it. So for right now, I'd be concerned with the top level here. And then underneath here, you can tell it if you want it to use a specific filter. I normally pick luminance because it just gets more data, right, than any of my other filters. So for the use blind solve failover option, we do want to have this turned on. Um, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit when we get there. Now, when you're using astrometry.net, the blind solve failover, because that's it also uses astrometry.net, is the same. So you don't really need to, you're not going to change anything in here because it's the same settings that you set up up top. So it's going to use the local astrometry.net uh, one for both of these and then once you're done there you can either click save or click OK and it'll remind you to click save so go ahead and save that up and then we want to have a couple of images loaded in so we can start testing out our plate solving so to start with here I'm gonna upload that same kind of uh, finished Orion image And then I'm also going to open up an image that's a little bit more representative of something that came straight off your camera in the night. This is one of the Sombrero Galaxy, just one of the, the raw images from that night. So let's start with the Orion one, because this one is, is probably very similar to an image you would just pull off of the internet somewhere, uh, Astrobin, Flickr, you know, anywhere. And you want to go ahead and solve it so that you know where, where this is. You know, this would be if you're going to help set up one of your targets, right? So maybe you're gonna plan your session and you wanna have your target there. So go ahead and right click on this. and choose plate solve. Now when you do that, it's gonna ask you for information about that image and you may not have it, right? If this is something you just pulled off the internet, you're not gonna have all this. Um, so in that case, you're not going to do a normal solve. That's when you're gonna do the blind solve and that's what the blind solve stands for is I don't know where I am, let me compare this against everything we've got. So it takes a little bit longer, but it will work for those images that you don't have any information on. So let's go ahead and click blind solve here. So you can see down below, it says plate solving, uploading the file for solve. Now the uploading here is all happening on the local computer because we're doing that local version. It does not require an internet connection and then it's going to go through and start counting the time this will probably take about a minute so we'll let it run through and it's done less than a minute actually 22 seconds pretty good so this is on the local machine, you know, nothing required internet connection. Uh, it came up with the RA and deck for it, even the angle of rotation and the image scale. You always like to see the confidence of 100 on the astrometry.net one. And then you have a nice checkbox underneath. Use these results as the reference image for one of your targets. In my case, I only have one target right now, but let's say I did take a picture off the internet and I want off the internet and I want the exact same framing. I want it want that object to be exactly in the same spot in my image. That's when you'd pick this checkbox and then click OK. And then when you go to look at your sequence now and you pull up the settings for that target, you'll see the RA and deck have been put in there. Now there's an option to make that a little bit easier uh, if you, you know, already have a particular image 
uh, in mind you can do the populate link from a URL and it'll grab that from some of the common sites that already have that information in there but this is really to show you if you just have a picture and you have no idea where it came from now one caveat to keep in mind on the blind failover this is only going to be as in order if you're using the local uh, server the local version of that astrometry.net if you remember at the beginning of that we downloaded different field of view uh, files for that so if the picture you're downloading is much larger or much much smaller than the field of view that you that you typically work with that is that local version is going to fail and that's where the remote version of the ansvr service the astrometry.net service uh, can be really helpful because then it doesn't matter what field of view you have so if you did want to switch to that one that's what we're going to look at as part of the additional plate solve options here so as I mentioned before, you know, when you have one, the astrometry.net up here, you end up with it down there because that's your, the only blind solve failovers that, uh, that Sequence Generator Pro uses. So let's go ahead and set that up. So let's say I want to do the remote one instead so that I know, you know, because most of the time I'm shooting from the backyard, I have a good internet connection. I know that it'll always work. That blind solve failover is always going to work for me if I'm using the remote one. Well, in that case, you know, that can take a little bit longer, as I said. So the, the one we just did took 22 seconds. It might take about 60 seconds or 70 seconds for the, the remote one to work. And, you know, when you're taking pictures all the time, you know, maybe cutting that, that 60 seconds out of your imaging time isn't something you want to do. So what I do as well is I work with one of the other plate solvers as the default option because some of these run a little bit more quickly than the astrometry.net. So I use plate solve 2 and the reason why for that is it, it tends to be very focused on that information that your camera will get on the RA and DAC um, from the telescope when you're taking images live. So it's very good for night of I just took an image let me plate solve it kind of work versus the astrometry.net is really good for I have a photo I don't have the information with it where was it where was it pointing at so I'd like to use both of these together so what that will let me do is when it's doing these these actions to move the telescope to the spot I want it to it uses the very fast one um, when it when it can and whenever it fails and it can't it uses that backup blind solve failover to make sure that it can keep going so if we want to do that one then we need to talk about plate solve 2 and how we get that one working so let's go ahead and save up what we've got here for now and really the best way to get plate solve 2 installed is to go to the help file so if you go to the Sequence Generator Pro help file and just type in plate solver, the very first thing that comes up is plate solvers. And, the, and when you look at that, it's going to go through and give you setup instructions for each one of these. That uh, local astrometry.net one, those are the same instructions that we went through earlier. But in this case, we're going for plate solve too. Now, Plate Solve 2 works pretty similarly to that ASNBR, the astrometry.net one, um, except for one difference. You don't have to install an actual application because the application of Plate Solve uh, for Plate Solve 2 is built into Sequence Generator Pro. So, really, all you need to do is get these two catalogs. So, you need to be able to go and get them. And in order to get them, you can go straight to the PlaneWave website. And this is where I got a little lost early on, is, okay, what am I looking for? And it tells you the instructions, but you kind of have to scroll around to find it. What you're looking for is where it says Plate Solve 2. And then you do not need the application, so you just ignore this first link. And then you download these two links here. 
I'll let them both run. Now I've got a pretty fast internet connection, but you can see they're each about 400 megabytes. So once again, you maybe if you if you're limited on disk space, maybe you just go with that local astrometry.net and you don't run these other two. But I'm going to go ahead and let these download here and I'll zip it along in the video and then once they're downloaded, I'll show you what you do with each of these. Okay. So I just opened up my downloads in my browser now that these are both done and you see I've got both of those downloaded. So what do I do with these? So really just click on them to begin with. So let's start with the APM catalog. And I'd like to start with this one because it has a little bit more of an installer to it. So plain wave APM catalog setup wizard. Oop, sorry, I clicked it twice. Let's click next to continue. It's going to ask where to put it. You can I would recommend that you pay attention to these because you will need to know where to where to go and reference these catalogs later. Uh, but in this case, I'm not going to change this one. I'm going to let it go to program files x86 starry ridge slash APM. We're going to tell it to go ahead and install. All right, so that one's done and we're going to go ahead and click finish there. So that's the APM catalog, and now we need to do this UCAC catalog here. So that one's just a zip file, and it's pretty straightforward. The indexes are just in the zip file. So all you really need to do is extract it. So I'm going to extract everything. I'm just going to put it there. Show the extracted files when complete. All right. So there's my extractive folder. And then you could leave it here or just copy it or cut it someplace uh, that you really want to make sure that you remember where it is. In my case, I found it easy to put it in that same folder that I just installed the other library, which is that under Program Files, then Starry Ridge. And then right next to the APM one, I will go ahead and put the UCAC one and that way both of those are in the same folder very easy to find them when I come back and speaking of coming coming back I'm gonna do that right now so now that I'm in here I want to go once again I'm going back to that equipment profile manager to mess with my plate solving settings so plate solve 2 is what I want to use and I'm gonna click settings on that and what it does is it opens up the plate solve application that is built in and packaged with sequence generator pro here and then we just need to go to file and say configure the catalog directories it needs to know where the catalogs are now when I open this up you see it's looking for those same two ones the first one it's looking for in that starry ridge folder and it found it which is great second one it's looking for where I used to have this in a different area so let me change the directory for it and once again, I'm going to go to that same folder that we were looking at before here. So program files x86, starry ridge, and the UCAC3. And you can see it says status OK because it found the, the index files it was looking for. So I can just close that up and I can just close this up. I don't need to mess with any of the other settings on there. The other additional thing for plate solve 2 is this option under the search. So plate solve 2, if you notice, we did not pick a field of view range there. So it has all of the files that it would need to be able to do an all sky search. However, it's honestly just too slow. It's really good when it has an idea of what it's looking for and can, can kind of start off in the right spot. But I've noticed that even if I left it set at max regions, it may very well go ahead and find what it's looking for, but it just will take too long. So I normally set this down between 100 regions and 300 regions, depending on how far off my initial photos tend to be. But I normally don't need to go anywhere above that. And in this case, I'll just set it to 200 regions. And and once again, I'm leaving my binning at one by one because that's the way that I take my images. If you tend to take your images at two by two or whatnot, then you probably want to change that setting here. Same kind of deal for exposure as before. And then it's these options here when we start getting into 
having it's not so much because of plate solve 2 but now that we're here and we're talking about it in the context of wanting to be as quick as possible uh, for our imaging time this is where i'll talk about these so the centering action when you are doing a plate solve the first thing that you're really trying to do is just saying this picture i have here what part of the sky was it from you know to a very good degree then what you do with that that information after that is center the telescope it puts that information of here's the photo you just took here's where i know it is it feeds that into the telescope saying this is what you're pointing at and then it'll say okay i need to center the telescope on this on this image or on a target image if, it, if you're trying to move that kind of thing and it will it will move the telescope to that new place take another image and plate solve that image well it may still be off a little bit this comes into play a lot when you use one of these images from somewhere else as your target and you haven't yet slewed to that target so the centering will say, okay, I know where this image was taken from. Let me try to move over to it and then, um, and then go ahead and take another image and realize, oh, I'm a little bit off, move again, take another image, etc. So that's what these times are. It will, it will do that move, take another image and try again up to 12 times is what I've set. Uh, the reason why I've set that is because of the last two boxes. You, you know, depending on how aggressive you are here, that's what requires more times. It may take longer to narrow in. You may get by with less if you're less aggressive here. So what I'm asking it to do in order to say, yes, I have centered on the object, is it needs to be less than 10 pixels off of where my reference image, where the dead center of that was. Um, I found with my mount, it can reliably do those 10 pixels, so that's what I go with. If your mount is always, even when it's doing its best, is tends to be about 20 or 30 pixels off, that's not bad, and you may want to go ahead and just leave it at that. And then the last one is the rotator error. So rotator error is you know, literally the rotation of the camera against the photo. So for example, if this star was rotated up to here, and that one was rotated down to there, how far off from this picture am I going to allow it to be? Now, I do not have an automatic rotator, so I use what Sequence Sharing Pro calls the manual rotator, which is my hand, and I unscrew the thing and turn the camera and screw it back down. Um, so each time it takes that plate solve, it'll say you are off by, say, 10 degrees or 80 degrees, counterclockwise that's how much you need to turn the camera and it'll give you a little arrow showing that so you unscrew it you turn it approximately what you feel like is that much screw it down it takes another image tells you oh you went too far you need to go two degrees back this way and so that's what really is leading me up to needing 12 times as my maximum to recenter is that i will get there and i'll get there pretty well but it'll take probably i've noticed an average of five to six times but I put it to 12 just in case I have a bad night, that kind of thing. Um, so this is re realistic. You can do one and a half degree plus or minus on your rotator and 10 pixels. That's something that you can do with a, a moderately decent mount. Um, and then once again, the same settings that we had before. Luminance filter here. And as I mentioned before, the blind solve failover is now the remote for me, astrometry.net. Um, I might change this if I was going to a place without an internet connection, I might change it to the local one um, just to have a backup if my main plate solver kind of had a fit. So once again, we'll go ahead and save this here. And so this first image we looked at was all about, I don't know anything about it. The second image, because it came out of my camera through Sequence Generator Pro, Sequence Generator Pro grabbed the statistics, or not statistics, the data from my camera and from my telescope mount and put that into the fits header of this. So when I go to plate solve this image, you'll see that that RA, deck, angle, and scale have already been filled in. Um, so I no longer have to use that blind solve anymore. I can just use the normal solve. 
And so let's take a look at the speed difference on that normal solve using plate solve two versus what we saw when we were using the local astrometry.net service. So I'm going to go ahead and click solve here and let's watch it go. So it opens this up, estimating background, subtracting background, looking at, oh, it's already found the match, right? So this took very little time here. Let's try it one more time and I'll just count this time. One, two, three, four, five, done. So in about five seconds, right? So it's about four times as fast as what the astrometry.net one was doing. Um, now, obviously, astrometry.net might be quicker when uh, might be going pretty quick too when it has more of this kind of hint info in it. But you know, in the night, it moves pretty fast. So for me, that means when I'm doing my imaging, I let it run this quick one. And then if it ever fails or is taking too long, that's why I have those regions set very low. So it'll time out pretty quickly. It will then use the blind solve failover, which might take 20 seconds or a minute um, to still get a result. Then when it starts moving the scope over and gets closer and closer, normally that faster one starts picking up and working and it just allows that centering action to happen more quickly. And you use that centering action not only at the beginning of the, the session to kind of center your scope on a spot and make sure it knows where it is in the sky, you also use it whenever a meridian flip happens. So once your scope passes the Meridian, Sequence Generator Pro does the automatic Meridian flip action. And even though your mount is normally good enough to say get this galaxy somewhere in the field of view, it's normally not going to be as precise as the images you've been taking. So doing that automatic centering action based off of where your photos were coming from uh, and plate solving them is really just the best way to make sure that even after a meridian flip you're going to be getting the same kind of images that you had before uh, without having to go back out there and manually make any changes so that's how this works in sequence generator pro so that's plate solving um, i know that was a lot of information but i hope that you saw that it really wasn't that hard on any one of them. I just showed you a bunch of different ways that you could get it done and how that kind of helps out your process later on. So I encourage any of you that have thought about doing plate solving to just bite the bullet. And since you have a laptop already controlling your, your telescope for guiding and for imaging, add on that one extra piece. It's really going to pay itself back for you in terms of ease of use and really opening up the sky. When you can take any image, like I showed you, you can run it through there to get the exact coordinates that it came from, point your telescope to it, and you're off to the races. You know, at that point, maybe you're zoomed in further than you want to be or not enough, but at least you know you're exactly where you want to be. And that's really what it's there for. So I hope that was helpful for everyone. And uh, let me know any questions or comments that you have. Uh, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Uh, let you know I had a little bit of trouble when I first got plate solving set up. Um, so maybe I'm forgetting some of the things that I ran across then. Um, I'll answer what I can. But I do encourage you guys to go and review the, the help files for your particular piece of software um, because they find that most of them do a good job and what tends to happen is you just skip a step somewhere. Um, but once you kind of have that in there, dial it in, load an image in there, do a test on it, and if you can get that working, you're probably going to be able to go forward with it in the dark skies. So till then, I wish everybody clear skies.